Hi. In this part of the session, we will look at AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification and Real Exam questions. There is a high probability to find these questions in the real exam, or similar. If you like my video don't forget to press the bell button and subscribe. I will create more helpful videos like this. Thank you. According to the AWS Acceptable Use Policy, which of the following statements is true regarding penetration testing of EC2 instances? Penetration testing is performed automatically by AWS to determine vulnerabilities in your AWS infrastructure. Penetration testing can be performed by the customer on their own instances without prior authorization from AWS. Penetration testing is not allowed in AWS. The AWS customers are only allowed to perform penetration testing on services managed by AWS. The correct answer is penetration testing can be performed by the customer on their own instances without prior authorization from AWS. Explanation AWS customers are welcome to carry out security assessments and penetration tests against their AWS infrastructure without prior approval for eight services. 1. Amazon EC2 instances, NAT gateways, and elastic load balancers. 2. Amazon RDS. 3. Amazon CloudFront. 4. Amazon Aurora. 5. Amazon API gateways. 6. AWS Lambda and Lambda Edge functions. 7. Amazon LightSail resources. 8. Amazon Elastic Beanstalk environments. Question number 2. How can you view the distribution of AWS spending in one of your AWS accounts? The correct answer is, by using AWS Cost Explorer. Explanation AWS Cost Explorer is a free tool that you can use to view your costs and usage. You can view data up to the last 13 months, forecast how much you are likely to spend for the next 12 months, and get recommendations for what reserved instances to purchase. You can use AWS Cost Explorer to see patterns in how much you spend on AWS resources over time, identify areas that need further inquiry, and see trends that you can use to understand your costs. You can also specify time ranges for the data, and view time data by day or by month. Question number 3. A startup company is operating on limited funds and is extremely concerned about cost overruns. Which of the below options can be used to notify the company when their monthly AWS bill exceeds $2,000? Choose 2. 1. Configure the AWS budget service to alert the company when the threshold is exceeded. 2. Set up a cloud watch billing alarm that triggers an SNS notification when the threshold is exceeded. 3. Configured Amazon Connect service to alert the company when the threshold is exceeded. 4. Configure the Amazon Simple Email Service to send billing alerts to their email address on a daily basis. 5. Configure AWS CloudTrail to automatically delete all AWS resources when the threshold is exceeded. The correct answers are, configure the AWS Budget Service to alert the company when the threshold is exceeded. And set up a CloudWatch billing alarm that triggers an SNS notification when the threshold is exceeded. Explanation. In CloudWatch, you can set up a billing alarm that triggers if your costs exceed a threshold that you set. This CloudWatch alarm can also be configured to trigger an SNS notification to your email address. AWS Budgets is another AWS service that can be used in this scenario. AWS Budgets gives you the ability to set custom budgets that alert you when your costs or usage exceed, or are forecasted to exceed, your budgeted amount. The difference between AWS Budgets and Amazon Cloud Watch Billing Alarms is that Amazon Cloud Watch Billing Alarms alert you only when your actual cost exceeds a certain threshold, while AWS Budgets can be configured to alert you when the actual or forecasted cost exceeds a certain threshold. Question number 4. In the AWS Shared Responsibility Model, which of the following are the responsibility of the customer? Choose 2. 1. Controlling physical access to compute resources. 2. Configuring network access rules. 3. Setting password complexity rules. 4. Disk disposal. 5. Patching the network infrastructure. The correct answers are, 
configuring network access rules, and setting password complexity rules. Explanation The customer is responsible for securing their network by configuring security groups, network access control lists, network ACLs, and routing tables. The customer is also responsible for setting a password policy on their AWS account that specifies the complexity and mandatory rotation periods for their IAM users' passwords. Question number 5. Which of the following must an IAM user provide to interact with AWS services using the AWS command line interface, AWS CLI? 1. Username and password. 2. User ID. 3. Access keys. 4. Secret token. The correct answer is Access keys. Explanation Access keys consist of an access key ID and secret access key, which are used to sign programmatic requests to AWS using the CLI or the SDK. Question number 6. Which of the below is the best practice when designing solution on AWS? 1. Use AWS reservations to reduce costs when testing your production environment. 2. Invest heavily in architecting your environment, as it is not easy to change your design later. 3. Provision large compute capacity to handle any spikes in load. 4. Automate wherever possible to make architectural experimentation easier. The correct answer is. Automate wherever possible to make architectural experimentation easier. Explanation. The well-architected framework identifies a set of general design principles to facilitate good design in the cloud. One stop guessing your capacity needs, eliminate guessing about your infrastructure capacity needs. When you make a capacity decision before you deploy a system, you might end up sitting on expensive idle resources or dealing with the performance implications of limited capacity. With cloud computing, these problems can go away. You can use as much or as little capacity as you need, and scale up and down automatically. Two test systems at production scale, in the cloud, you can create a production scale test environment on demand, complete your testing, and then decommission the resources. Because you only pay for the test environment when it's running, you can simulate your live environment for a fraction of the cost of testing on premises. 3. Automate to make architectural experimentation easier. Automation allows you to create and replicate your systems at a low cost and avoid the expense of manual effort. You can track changes to your automation, audit the impact, and revert to previous parameters when necessary. 4. Allow for evolutionary architectures. Allow for evolutionary architectures. In a traditional environment, architectural decisions are often implemented as static, one-time events, with a few major versions of a system during its lifetime. As a business and its context continue to change, these initial decisions might hinder the system's ability to deliver changing business requirements. In the cloud, the capability to automate and test on demand lowers the risk of impact from design changes. This allows systems to evolve over time so that businesses can take advantage of innovations as a standard practice. 5. Drive architectures using data. In the cloud, you can collect data on how your architectural choices affect the behavior of your workload. This lets you make fact-based decisions on how to improve your workload. Your cloud infrastructure is code, so you can use that data to inform your architecture choices and improvements over time. 6. Improve through game days. Test how your architecture and processes perform by regularly scheduling game days to simulate events in production. This will help you understand where improvements can be made and can help develop organizational experience in dealing with events. Question number 7. Which S3 storage class is best for data with unpredictable access patterns? 1. Amazon S3 Standard in Frequent Access. 2. Amazon S3 Standard. 3. Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering. 4. Amazon S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval. The correct answer is Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering. Explanation. The S3 Intelligent Tiering Storage class is designed to optimize costs by automatically moving data to the most cost-effective access tier, without performance impact or operational overhead. It works by storing objects in two access tiers, one tier that is optimized for frequent access and another lower-cost tier that is optimized for infrequent access. 
For a small monthly monitoring and automation fee per object, Amazon S3 monitors access patterns of the objects in S3 intelligent tiering, and moves the ones that have not been accessed for 30 consecutive days to the infrequent access tier. If an object in the infrequent access tier is accessed, it is automatically moved back to the frequent access tier. There are no retrieval fees when using the S3 intelligent tiering storage class, and no additional tiering fees when objects are moved between access tiers. It is the ideal storage class for long-lived data with access patterns that are unknown or unpredictable. Question number 8. AWS allows users to manage their resources using a web-based user interface. What is the name of this interface? 1. AWS SDK 2. AWS CLI 3. AWS Management Console 4. AWS API The correct answer is AWS Management Console Explanation The AWS Management Console allows you to access and manage Amazon Web Services through a simple and intuitive web-based user interface. You can also use the AWS Console mobile app to quickly view resources on the go. Question number 9. Which of the following does not belong to the AWS cloud computing models? Software as a Service, SaaS. Infrastructure as a Service, IaaS Platform as a Service, PIS Networking as a Service, NAS. The correct answer is Network as a Service. Explanation There are three cloud computing models. 1. Infrastructure as a Service, IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service, IaaS, contains the basic building blocks for cloud IT and typically provides access to networking features, computers, virtual or on dedicated hardware, and data storage space. IaaS provides you with the highest level of flexibility and management control over your IT resources and is most similar to existing IT resources that many IT departments and developers are familiar with today. 2. Platform as a Service, PUS, Platform as a Service, PUS, removes the need for your organization to manage the underlying infrastructure, usually hardware and operating systems and allows you to focus on the deployment and management of your applications. This helps you be more efficient as you don't need to worry about resource procurement, capacity planning, software maintenance, patching, or any of the other undifferentiated heavy lifting involved in running your application. 3. Software as a Service, SaaS, Software as a Service, SaaS, provides you with a completed product that is run and managed by the service provider. In most cases, people referring to software as a service are referring to end-user applications. With a SaaS offering you do not have to think about how the service is maintained or how the underlying infrastructure is managed. You only need to think about how you will use that particular piece of software. A common example of a SaaS application is web-based email which you can use to send and receive email without having to manage feature additions to the email product or maintain the servers and operating systems that the email program is running on. Question number 10. The company has an AWS Enterprise Support Plan. They want quick and efficient guidance with their billing and account inquiries. Which of the following should a company use? AWS Customer Service, AWS Support Concierge, AWS Health Dashboard, AWS Operations Support. The correct answer is AWS Support Concierge. Explanation Included as part of the Enterprise Support Plan, the support concierge team are AWS billing and account experts that specialize in working with enterprise accounts. The concierge team will quickly and efficiently assist you with your billing and account inquiries and work with you to help implement billing and account best practices so that you can focus on running your business. Support concierge service includes 24x7 access to AWS billing and account inquiries, guidance and best practices for billing allocation, reporting, consolidation of accounts, and root-level account security. 
access to enterprise account specialists for payment inquiries, training on specific cost reporting, assistance with service limits, and facilitating bulk purchases.